there, I'm Stephanie Langston for Y'all Wire in Nashville, hanging out with Charlie Daniels. Hanging out. Hanging we out. Are. Yeah. You're getting ready to turn 76 years young. How'd you know that? Because I do my research. <laughs> I sure am. 28th this month, I'll be 76. And you just celebrated your 48th anniversary. 48th wedding anniversary. My wife has it yesterday. Yeah. You've accomplished so much in your life. What would you say is the best accomplishment? You know, people ask me that a lot of times, and I'm going to have to say that my the thing that really always touches my heart and comes to mind is uh, I employ 30 people, have employed 25 to 30 people for the last 30 years, uh, steadily and gainfully. We have 401k plan, we have health insurance, we have the greatest bunch of people in the world. Being a part of that family is, is as important to me as anything in my career. Well, I read that you said when people retire, they retire to do something that they love uh -huh. and that you wouldn't go that way because you're doing I'm music. doing what I want. Why should I retire? Want. I'd sit around the house and play guitar, so I might as well be getting paid for it. No, I love what I do. You know, there'd be some professions that if at my age you would not physically be able to do. But I am physically able to do it. There's not that much physical involved in what I do. I mean, you know, it's I'm not trying to make it sound like a piece of cake because it's not. It's it's tiring. It gets uh, it gets very tiring sometimes. But it's not something that I am not able to do. So as long as I can do it, I'm gonna be done. They say that you picked up the fiddle more than 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you actually remember when you picked up the fiddle? Can you take us back? I started playing guitar first when I was about, I, 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 I go back and forth between 14 and 15, but it was somewhere right in that area. I started playing fiddle probably a year and a half later that I started messing with it. And I say playing it, I was messing with it, trying to learn how to play it. I scraped for a long time. I squeaked and squawked for a long time before I ever got the sound out of the fiddle. But, uh, if, if I'm anything, I'm stubborn and tenacious, so I stuck with it and learned a little something about it. What do you think about this whole uh, social media stuff? I know you're doing Twitter. I... Well, you know, to me, I, my son has dragged me kicking and screaming into every bit of technology I ever got involved in because I said, you know, he, Dad, you need to, no, I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, I've come to find out, I took a couple of years of typing in high school, so I'm able to handle the keyboard. <laughs> so that's the only thing that saved me, actually. But uh, it's instant communication with people around the world. I mean, I get... Twitter's from people in Australia and, you know, just all over the doggone place. And it's like you find out you know what they're thinking. They want to know what you're thinking. Uh, you know, if you're coming somewhere, they want to know if you're coming. Are you coming to Australia? Yeah, you know, are you coming to here, there, yonder, UK, whatever, or into somewhere in this country? They can ask personal questions that they don't get a chance to answer. They don't get a chance to do what you're doing right now. And that's kind of a that's kind of a national interview, if you will, when you when you do Twitter. It seems like some of your conversations get a little intense, and there are a lot of political conversations that I noticed today, specifically. Well, you know, I never involve politics and my personal beliefs or my personal feelings about things like that on my stage show or anything to do with my career. That's the the Twitter thing and all the other things that I do are my personal life, and that's when I talk about that sort of thing. So yeah, I do talk about it. I have very deep feelings about it. this country. I've, I've put 75 years into it, and you know, I've gone through a lot with it, and I want to see it keep going. I want my kids and grandkids to be able to enjoy it the way that I have. And I'm very concerned about it right now. So yes, I do write about it a lot. Well, I think it's great that you share your opinion out there. What about music? Do you actually listen to today's artists? I know you did something with Little Big Town's Pontoon. Aaron yeah. Lewis, you did something with yeah. recently. I like Zach Brown Band. I like them because they're innovative, because they don't do it like everybody else does. There's probably a lot of other people out there that I would like to that if I listen, but I really don't. I stay so busy. I stay so busy doing what I do and just being who I am, you know, with a, I got a band to run, business to run. I, I write two columns a week for my my website. I do two soap, what I call soapboxes, they're columns. I Twitter, I write music, I, you know, I just do a lot of things and I stay so busy I really don't get a lot of chance to just sit around and listen. And usually if I want to listen to something, I'll listen to something, you know, on my, you know, listen to something like a recording. Um, well, there ain't records anymore, but, you know, <laughs> on my iPad. All right. But uh, it's, you know, I really don't either have or really don't take the time to really keep up with things like I used to. Well, and you still give back, and that's what you're doing tonight. Tell us about Scholarships for Heroes. This is a labor of love for me. It is to help some very special people get a college education and kind of some of them, especially some of them that were grievously wounded, get to kind of jumpstart their lives and get their dreams going again because they was a period of their life when they got hurt really bad in the war. And it had to be a dark time for them trying to heal up and trying to 
Yeah, I think everybody figures on doing something after they get out of the service. They have something planned they're going to do. And sometimes some of these kids are hurt so bad they cannot pursue that dream for one reason or another because of their wounds. But this kind of gives them a little, you know, a little leeway and they can they can do something else. They're able to go and, as I say, kind of jumpstart their lives and get things going again. It might not be what they had in mind to start with, but it, it is a dream and it means a lot to them. And their greatest, bravest, bunch of kids that you will ever run into. We had all 113 of them on the stage out at Lipscomb last year when we did the event out there. And I mean, they're they're just, they got all kinds of wounds. They're limping, they got, you know, visible wounds, invisible wounds, and yet they're still going. They got, a lot of people would not even get out of bed in the morning if they were that way, but these 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 are the best. Our, our military folks, you, when you see somebody in uniform, you can say it's one of the greatest Americans around because they're the best we got, no doubt about it. Awesome. Well, it seems like every year you do another event here at the Palm that's always benefiting something, but there's always a string that kind of pulls them together. Can you just kind of set us up for the evening and what we're going to be seeing? Well, we're going to be seeing a lot of people eating dinner here very shortly. <laughs> I'm late, so they're, they're kind of late getting it done. Uh, we got a, a, an auction going on. We've got uh, Aaron Lewis has come. and we got people who speak. we got people who are going to speak about the military, people who have been in the military, people who have been through all kinds of things. Last year we had Marcus Luttrell, who was the... In fact, they just made making a movie about his life, about being the lone survivor in Afghanistan. Everybody in his SEAL unit besides him got killed. And we, that kind of people, we got some people here tonight that are going to be relating some very, very interesting things. So awesome. it'll be an enjoyable evening. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time to be with us. My pleasure. Also, thank I you. want to mention November 15th, your album, Hallelujah, It's Christmas Time. Hallelujah, It's Christmas Time again, yes. It's your favorite time of the year, huh? My favorite, yes. All right, Charlie Absolutely. Daniels. Thank you, dear.